so we've covered the director set stuff, the placement of the layout, and the amount of composition that we had as an as a an end result. But as I was working with things on this particular shot, we definitely uh, were at a lower point. We had to model up a lot of this stuff. And although I don't have an exact recreation of the back and forth process of um, iteration after iteration after iteration, what I uh, have prepared for you is a breakdown of how the general pass structure went, um, where I kind of focused my work flow and where I spent my time uh, sort of like uh, in a session by session basis. So I like to work in passes. I'm, I like to be as iterative as I can um, whenever I'm approaching something like this. Um, obviously we had the initial blocking as sort of our core placement and volume, but you know, details and, and uh, refinement kind of came through that. And we had a good level of detail from our initial rector set pieces. So if we go ahead and unhide our our navigator and where she sits within the camera view. And uh, so the first example here, obviously we're harvesting the, uh, you know, the final mesh, but I mean, you can see right now, there's a lot of erector set stuff that we'd already defined. This was already, this is as it was in the erector set. We had our base blocking for the chair and I'd gone in and refined the chair more and kind of had a better sense of where I wanted to go with that. And we sort of figured out the brain uh, of the ship, which is sort of like instead of a rectangular hal, we had a you know we had a round hal. We had a you know instead of being a box, he was a he was a sphere, and it's sort of like a uh, 2001, but also a nod to uh, my love of the uh, that scene in Akira with the the giant uh, deep freeze area. So and we start bringing in some elements um, of mechanical air you know, airplane parts with this sort of uh, sort of corrugated metal scaffolding. And uh, we sort of elaborated on the, you know, refined that initial shape of the paneling, the sort of angled paneling. Um, but again, it's still sort of blocking. The key thing that's happened here is that, you know, at, by the time I'm done this pass, sort of elaborated the helmet more. We've integrated all the erector set plugs and we've modified the erector set plugs to give us more variation of this, but ultimately they all come from the, the three or four versions I had. Um, a big feature on the first pass uh, that you see here, and I'm just going to go to wireframe really quick so you guys can get a good look at it, was that uh, we stayed again relatively light and a lot of this geo was already um, set aside for us from the erector set and we'd sort of sussed out what some of the key players were going to be for shapes and uh, the big thing at this point at this pass is that all those uh, pipes that we initially had built I merged down into a singular object which became the floor which is the true the re, uh, the tree like root structure that I was very adamant about wanting to express. So this was the end result of um, condensing all that down into what you see here. So if I go ahead and throw a turbo smooth on it, this is probably the densest piece of mesh I have in the composition. It's uh, obviously it's quite dense. Um, but I had made the decision that I didn't just want to have these pipes um, just sort of butted against a ground plane, and I didn't want to see an obvious seam. I felt it was very important that it felt integrated and it was just sort of fused right in with the metal. And I have some ideas uh, when I go to texture this of what I'm going to be doing with that. Um, but for now, this was sort of the base cage that I settled on which has this ultimately this root like structure, but still retains, you know, this pipey nature. I didn't want to get too away from that. And I intentionally left the curves not completely Bezier, but, uh, but instead the sort of pseudo linear, pseudo, you know, curved subdivided mesh.
So we'll also hide our navigator and we'll go in and we'll sort of dissect the VR helmet, which we can see right here. Now we're so far back and it's so far into the, to the, the halo here, the control halo that um, you didn't really need to do too much with it uh, outside to get some, just some key cool shapes uh, going on. So we smooth it out and we see uh, I had borrowed some, uh, some camera lens ideas, sort of like focal imaging or whatever you'd like to call it with these base plugs from the Erector set that I, you know, of course, played around with and altered. And all these plugs come from the Erector set, just sort of chopped up and, uh, in various things and sort of worked out some of these key shapes that we're going to run pipes through. And you can see the baseline for the main conduits have been defined. Uh, the asymmetry has sort of been established. The most symmetrical we get is these two uh, sort of plate structures and the fact that they're just tubes. But ultimately, outside of that, they're, oh, they're pretty different from one another. And this is a key erector set piece that I added two additional uh, ports on. And we gave him an eyeball, which I always envisioned as sort of this pulsing blue. All right, so that would be just the first look at the first pass. So this is generally kind of, you know, some of the stuff we had worked out. Now, if we reveal the second pass, as you can see here, we just sort of added more stuff and sort of figured out some more things. A lot of it is a rector set again. Um, but we've just gone in and using curve tools, or sorry, a line tool it would be called. Um, we've gone and just built a curve and had it render out um, the geo for us and just played to set the thickness and we were able to create a lot of piping really quickly. And I wanted to make sure that the piping was all interlocking like the sort of the reference that I had of this jet engine. It was pretty important that I uh, had that element in there. So if we go to the wireframe on this, you can kind of see where I made a very active effort to stay light and clean wherever it was possible. We didn't want to get too crazy with these base shapes. So this is pass two. Again, it's mostly just a rector set placement and then uh, filling in the blanks with some tubing. So if we move on to pass three, pass three, uh, when I was looking back at all my workflow uh, captures, was where I spent most of the time uh, here on the chair. I knew that I wanted to have one element uh, that was very much like this, that was sort of the integration of the chair itself. So the chair, this is all the systems feeding just the chair. It really isn't about the rest of the ship, but it isn't really about um, power systems or anything like that. It, it's mostly about the functionality of the chair and and the needs of the of the pilot. And one of the things I haven't gotten into yet with, um, with her, and it'll be in the final composition, is this uh, sort of the the further interface aside from just the helmet itself, but uh, how she's cared for via the the machinery and how she integrates all into that and how she's you know very much fully uh, a part of this machine now. I, it doesn't you don't really get the sense as it is, but when I'm finished with it, my hope is that you get this idea that you can't really quite figure out where she begins and where the mach or where she ends anymore in how she's integrated with the machine. And this is this is what sort of implies all of that is 
waste management and power systems and um, just stuff that's directly associated to her and her life in this this system. Um, and then this next pass here, something is very very important to me, and I have a colleague that I work with that he he's uh, he's mentioned time and time again with me uh, that this is something that he's very big on and um, very much on the same page with him. I agree one hundred percent. Layering and composition. Um, when you're approaching paintings, you are uh, applying passes of, of paint and, and I like to approach composition in three very much the same way if I can, if it's appropriate, which is, you know, you have your base shape that we built here, which is we had this base idea, this root structure, but on its own it's it doesn't quite hold up. Um, it doesn't really have the depth that we're we're hoping for. And what we achieve on a pass like this and 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 the so could be same could be said about uh, the pass beforehand. Uh, one, it has a functionality, but it also added depth and layering to your composition. And since you established a good base form, it's very easy for you to come kind of come in and just sort of pencil in or sculpt in in this case what you uh, the secondary details or tertiary details in order to give you that that you know that sense of awesome depth and uh, obviously again giving you more room to play with shadows and lighting as well but uh, this is the stuff that I really enjoy doing very much so that's pass four so if we go in here and sort of take a look let's drop the turbo smooth off this guy so you can see, it's a lot of Erector Set pieces just sort of placed um, in key positions that I know I want to fill out with a bit more. Um, you can see some of them have been altered slightly. And a lot more line work, just drawing in more tubes and just placing more tubes. Now, the great thing about doing these passes too, when you're doing this stuff, is that you can lay a curve down, a very basic piece of geometry. But you don't really need to have to go back and explain it necessarily. Sometimes the composition, once you get everything in place on these passes, you think that you have to go in and res something up and, and get really crazy with the detailing. But you actually can let uh, things go. Like in a lot of cases, I just have very simple tubing that with um, a good texture map and a nice uh, little bit of attention and some love there with the painting of the maps, you wouldn't need much more than that. The shape is a simplistic shape. And it's totally okay to let that little pipe just be a little pipe just be in you know all simple on its own and you don't necessarily have to go in and, and detail it up and you can uh, eliminate a lot of over modeling and potentially a lot of heartache when you realize that you buried over detailed mesh under a bunch of other detailed mesh so on this pass here I had sort of been looking at the composition over and over again and I was finding um, that I didn't quite like what was going on down here, and I couldn't put my finger on what needed to happen. Uh, I knew I had this sort of angled walkway, and I and I was playing with the idea that within this environment, you know, all these pipes were just sort of spilling down into these gaps and uh, going off into you know this, the black abyss, running to various systems throughout the ship and um, the underside of these. Uh, main roots here, if you were to look from the bottom up, you would just see just massive amounts of wire just sort of drifting down through this sort of void that we would consider like um, the soil. And you would have all these sort of roots coming down through there. And it would it would just be completely overwhelming to look at it. Um, that's sort of how I envisioned what's going on outside of our, our understanding and outside of our view. And it's just something I like to keep in mind is like what happens beyond this. Um, it's of course good to stay in the now, but it's also good to be able to kind of explore and have a uh, little ideas bubbling in your head. And I guess where I, I settled was I, I, I played around with this idea of this, this gangway here because I kind of wanted to introduce a high frequency detail piece of mesh because I had so many broad clean shapes. And again, with the layering, uh, approach 
we're able to uh, conceal a bit of the model, uh, add a little bit more complexity, but ultimately not really disturb the composition too much. And in, in, in essence, I found that it actually uh, highlighted the roots a little bit more. And I'd had a couple of people comment on that, and so I felt pretty good about that design change. And uh, you can see that we had introduced the monitors. And at this point, it's, it's fair for me to tell you that um, at this stage, we just had uh, these placed monitors here. We didn't really have these robust one-off pieces. And I kind of got to that a little bit later after I'd placed all these and there'd been some dialogue and a colleague had said to me, you know, you, uh, you probably want to get in there and sort of not just have different versions in terms of detailing, but that whole entire different monitors, like it needed to be an eclectic collection of monitors. And so um, one of the things I actually got really got into on this uh, piece was once it stopped being an afterthought and I started to pursue it uh, more intently, one of the first things I did is I just sat down for a whole night and uh, just looked at um, the consoles from uh, space shuttles, previous launches of space shuttles, like. Uh, uh, oh, they go out into space. Oh, obviously, this is space shuttle. <laughs> um, and I just saw how those systems were built and how cockpit systems were built. And they had a framework or a box or they had a certain amount of space that they had to work with. And they would, um, you know, build the machinery into these boxes. And uh, my coworker has this really great office that he's, he's built up too where he has these... Um, these little little eyeglass things that you can look down into and you see this really crazy um, old school sort of steampunk image come back at you. And it, it's it's a visor type thing. Not quite what I have here, but it was the same idea. And I remember just looking at it one day and I just thought, well, that'd be really cool. And I was, it kind of came up in my mind when I was designing this. So I kind of added in. It was sort of the idea was that what she is seeing and in her world, this would be the, an average crew member who has access to this area if they had to somehow i don't know share her space and what she's seeing and what what's going on in her world which of course she's totally in her head here this would be our way of sort of visualizing her world a little bit more it was just sort of a nod to this uh, element that my coworker had had on his desk i really kind of liked it and uh so, you know, there was a lot of little things that were sort of finding their way in here in the later stages when I was just sort of reaching for ideas. And, of course, you know, the singular old school keyboard stayed. But we, you know, went in and changed around things and um, and made a point of uh, building out different versions. And I, I wanted to have, you know, this low tech idea, which is like, even though we're in the future and things are crazy, we still use, you know, very basic tried and true things that, that are very difficult to break. It's not like a crazy supercomputer sort of world in that sense. Uh, the systems do what they're built to do and they have their job and it's very much like uh, how we approach things today, but just sort of we're still kind of letting certain things go. So toggle switches and, you know, and the dials and, uh, and readouts. And, you know, I envision that these monitors have very specific jobs um, that only sort of do, they monitor one area or one part of the, of the system, you know, and since we have so many systems in theory in our, in our, in our ship, our fictitious ship coming to one place, it made sense that you could monitor and, sort of interface with them all. Um, the idea is the man machine interface, they handle all that just fine. But for the average crew member, they would have an area to sort of also take a look, almost like looking over somebody's shoulder as they're driving or something like that. And uh, being able to get a sense of what's really going on and not having to rely on them entirely. So it's just, this is purely for the um, third person. And you can see our initial um, piping uh, plan stayed pretty pretty true it, it worked out pretty well and i expanded on it a little bit more when i uh, made this one off here this sort of central computer piece um, and uh, again another version right here for this little tri monitor setup and this is an example of uh, if i'd had a bit more time to get a little bit more random you can kind of get away with using the same element over and over again uh, sort of as like the master template, 
but if you just sort of dress it slightly differently, the your viewing eye will kind of accept it as being just fine. You know, it just doesn't look repeated. If you were to repeat every instance of of that geo, you might find it a little bit uh, distracting or draw you out of the composition a little bit more. So that's pass five. So the next pass, I just sort of went in and uh, I think, yeah, I was just placing uh, plugs and just trying to, um, the scales I went back and forth on this, I had the scales very much smaller before and I just didn't quite have that sense of, you know, big power cords, big, you know, bundles of systems and fiber optic cables all coming into one place. So I made sure to, I think I doubled or tripled the size even and uh, felt that the the effect that it made for like a halo uh, around her head uh, was a lot more effective. And again, I didn't really have to worry about integration too much like I would normally have to because of the, the angle of the camera and the shadows and distance. So I was able to just sort of loosely place and have fun there. And I knew that this was going to be the whole crown to, to the navigator's head and um, wanted to make sure that it it had a certain amount of uh, sort of epicness and sort of cool. So in this pass, I'm just uh, sort of filling in the background a little bit and just felt like I had some space I needed to use up and I and I had already designed uh, the main computer itself to have these sort of coolant porps. I kind of just view these as like uh, just large conduits of just bringing either uh, biofluids that you know that the computer system itself needs or just straight up cooling fluids um, cold you know nitrogen or water or whatever the system is for cooling off this massive computer system here and also you know running power systems uh, through these main conduits here but th these ones were were intentionally meant to be like fluid and uh, uh, lubricants or whatever you know oils or grease or whatever needs to be <laughs> you know needs to be used uh, kind of just open to the imagination and then this pass here, um, we're just sort of going in and just, I felt like the monitor system didn't, I didn't have enough coming into my foreground. I felt like the one thing that was lacking near the end of the composi composition was I hadn't quite figured out what I wanted to do here yet. I had thumbnailed all manner of idea in here, even to the point of having a whole cluster of more monitors, but I felt as soon as I started dragging some of this stuff over and playing with it, that I um, was unbalancing everything. So I wanted, I knew I wanted to stay negative in my space down here, but still have something. And over here, I, I kept thinking I had to do something back here. And the ultimate decision then was just to just come straight up into the foreground and just put something right up into your into your, your viewing area and actually i really enjoyed giving a profile to the monitor and actually for the first time within this stuff being able to actually see the back side of it and i still don't have to fully explain myself i get to just skirt it and just sort of frame up and just sort of finish the composition on this side which then actually starts and finishes several arcs uh, of eye of eye travel and it sort of made this a little denser and allowed um, for this walkway, which <laughs> the decision for the walkway came because one, I needed to fill the space a little bit more, I felt. But two, from a practical standpoint, I want things to still look like they function. I don't want it to just simply just be for, for art. Um, I believe that you have to find a balance in composition and functionality. And um, so one of the decisions was that I needed to make sure that this looked like it was a workable area for somebody to come in and sort of interface with this. So that's where this spawned from. And actually it provided a nice calming area for the eye in juxtaposition to the ground itself and the monitor cluster. So we actually had this nice oasis in, com in the composition, which I quite liked. 
And then the final pass, which was actually the really fun one, and I um, I had gotten really excited about this one as I kind of was working towards it, and I, and I knew that this pass would just sort of pull everything together and it would give this, this overall feeling that I wanted, uh, which was that organic sort of living sort of thing and it was the capillaries that were that needed to happen with the veins and they were you know sort of formulated all these things is what they were was was nerve clusters and brain and it just all came together and ultimately i settled um on this railing uh right here to fill up the space and i had kind of fought this idea and I'd had a couple of people, you know, be very adamant about that railing needing to be there. And I'm very glad that she was very adamant about that railing. And uh, so thank you, honey. Uh, <laughs> and I'm really, I'm glad I put it in. I, I feel like um, it was the finishing touch that needed to happen there. And I'm glad that uh, she championed for that. And I, and I listened to it ultimately because I had played with a number of scenarios and none of them quite just felt right like that, like that railing did. And uh, I really like that part of composition too. When you're putting everything together and some a key element just is missing for the longest time and you you get it in there and it's it sells it it's just perfect and you're just so thrilled to see it um and the draping of the wires added that extra oomph of organicness that uh we really needed to have happen and i'm glad i saved it the last it's like saving the best for last um but yeah that would be uh, sort of the approach to the layering and the composition and the passes and the workflow, you know, general, general workflow as to how I built up this composition. Um, and uh, yeah. <laughs>